and what I needed as a kid, it was just have people around me to play games with, to, to, to make me feel like I belong. Um, and that was not always the case. I was most of the time just cliche outcast gamer. <laughs> My name is Sue Lafasani and I'm the account manager for Tundra Esports. Uh, aside from that, I am also the chair of Women in Esports. But with the Women in Esports being so important to me, is just that I, there are some initiatives now that when I was younger, when I was a little girl, I would have loved that. I was always the outcast when I was at school. Back then, the, the, the stigma of playing video games has changed a lot in the past 10 years. The stigma of, and stereotypes of, of, of gamers, you know, in a sense, is, is, is always going to be there, but it was, it was even more so back then. It was not as mainstream. Now, uh, you know, with these, these, these very, you know, uh, elaborate prize pools and stuff, and people have been catching on way more attention. But that was not the case so many, like, you know, close to a decade ago. It, it was not the case at all. So for me, and I always mention this whenever it gets asked to me, I want to do, like, I want to commit to, to things that I would have loved as a child. Like, I want to do what I needed as a kid. And what I needed as a kid, it was just have people around me to play games with, to, to, to make me feel like I belong. Um, and that was not always the case. I was most of the time just cliche outcast gamer. <laughs> but uh, that has changed now. I've got, you know, I've, I've, I've found myself in a, in a here at the moment where I've just always been like, if, if younger me could see me not right now, like I wouldn't, she wouldn't believe me, first of all. And yeah, that's just, that's why it's so important to me. It's very personal to me. It's, uh, it, it to, to make you feel like you don't belong is, is so, it can be so sheltering. It can feel like very overwhelming. And um, yeah, to, to create that, to create an environment where that, but where you can, where you can combat that, I think is so important um, in general. So that's why. <laughs> Um, I mentioned this on the panel uh, at the Be, the Be The Change Summit, but it's just, it's such a, for me, it's just one of the main things that always stands out to me. For context, my parents are from Iran and uh, I've, I've been born and raised in the Netherlands. Um, I've always seen myself as Dutch. My mom always spoke to us Dutch when we grew up, just as a, as a not a safety measure, but because we lived in a very small town and they were quite not as hospitable uh, uh, towards, towards you know, us, us moving there, unfortunately, but that's just the way sometimes things goes. But in, in order to, for my mom to make us feel safe, she spoke Dutch to us on a daily basis. My Farsi is not really that good and really it's at elementary level. Um, but I remember um, I was at a party one time, I was 16 years old, uh, and I had this little bit of a speech problem where I was speaking, I was tripping over my words. So I would like, my mouth like moved faster than my brain or the other way around. Like I would just constantly trip over my words because I was speaking so quick. Um, and this happened when I was speaking to this one guy at the party and then I noticed that was happening and I was just like, oh, like, sorry, you know, that happens. Um, I tend to trip over my words sometimes. And, and he, he said, that, oh, Dutch is a very hard language to learn. And I was just like, that just kind of took me took me a little bit back because that's the moment that I real like at least realized or it became audibly I heard it audibly clear that you know I've always seen myself as Dutch I've always seen myself as just you know a part of a community or wherever I was part of my friends and part of Dutch people but there are people that might not just that, that won't see it that way that will just look at you and just don't see it that way. And that's just that for me, that was at like at 16, I was just like that, that became very clear. And I, at the moment, I, I've become way more, of course, you can become way more assertive anyway, as you, as you get older and you tend to care less, but I've definitely learned to at least to speak up and, and push back a bit on, on this as well. Um, but yeah, that's just one of the main, the main focuses I've, I've ever had. When people ask me this question, I always give this answer because there was just, I just remember it clearly. I feel like every time I speak, I'm there and I you just see it. I'm just like, wait a minute. He doesn't see me as Dutch. Like what, have, what, what have I not done that I, that allowed me to at least, you know, commit to, commit to, the, commit to, the, this these amount of people uh, I, I when I speak Dutch I have a very Dutch accent too I you hear clearly where I'm from uh, just in from from a, from a Dutch point of view as well I come from the northern part of Holland so yeah that's uh, one one particular uh, example I can give <laughs>
Oh, that's a really good question. I mean, conscious bias is pretty much what stems from stereotypes, right? It comes from a from a bias, whether it's gender bias, whether it's any other bias towards, uh, you know, any uh, marginalized groups. Um, so conscious ways to combat that is honestly just have an open mind, but not just have an open mind, just have a, a conversation with, 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 uh, with people. I mean, what you see online most of the time, I have to honestly admit, it can be just rage bait. It can just be, cre- it, be it can be created to invoke a reaction out of people. And I feel like that is sometimes not at all portrayed in what's in real life, because when you actually speak to people, or at least speak to the people that are being marginalized and that you see online, that you see these like very elaborate clickbaity stuff coming on, if, I, I promise you, if you just speak to them, they're just, they're just, you know, they're not gonna do anything uh, out of malice. It's never gonna be out of malice. And I feel like that's so important. And that's why I mentioned as well with esports being so online and digital, it is important for people to kind of come together uh, on a face-to-face uh, interaction. It's It's so important to just keep having, you know, create conversations and create these discussions and create these summits and have events and because face to face contact is just everything that you can't fit, you can't relate that to 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 being online even if it was, if it was a, a Zoom call or like whatever it, it, the body language that you have the connection that you have with real people that has always been so important that is why events are a multi-million dollar industry it's because you have that first-hand connection with with an artist that you're seeing with people around you with esports events example i went to gamescom for the first time when i was i think i was 14 and that was so memorable to me because that was the first time that i'm like oh my god i'm around people that are like me like i'm around i see the cosplayers of the games that i like i see the people like everyone likes video games and to to come from Uh, an area where I felt very secluded and felt very outcast Uh, and then to come to Germany Cologne and to go to Gamescom and just feel like everyone there was for the exact same thing that felt so amazing and that's why you know like I said concerts that's what concerts are you're there for the artists you're there to see the artists you're there with like-minded people to to enjoy what you like to do so um yeah that's that would be it (laughs) Uh, as in opportunities, I see a lot of opportunities. Like I said, like summits, like the ones that we're at right now, is such a great opportunity for people to just engage and 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 to tune in and to hopefully to to be more uh, to have more people on on the floor too. Um, and the challenges that we face probably is just going to take time. It's going to take time. It's it's the same thing with women in esports. You know, with tournament support being increased and participation numbers being going up, it is only going to be a matter of time. But I, I, I promise, like, it's going to go in the blink of an eye, I feel, because in the past 10 years, things have moved so fast. And I feel like with with the landscape of the internet and landscape of social media, things feel like it's moving at a thousand miles per hour. Like, it can go so fast. So I feel like the challenge is just mostly just time and patience. But that they both like time and patience is both needed with the opportunities that they have they can't they kind of they can't uh perform well on their own you know in order to break these challenges you need to have opportunities to understand any other challenges that may occur in the in the in the next time as well they kind of correspond to each other so um yeah i feel like I'm I'm very I'm very happy to hit, see that there's you know events like the Be the Change Summit and other EDI initiatives being pushed, so that it could create an understanding of why it's actually needed. Uh, in the final words, I mean I am very honored to be here. I'm very happy to be here. I mean, like I said, if 13 year old me would see me right now, I don't think she would she would uh, she would understand uh, the, the amount of joy that it, ta- it brings me to, to see where esports is now and to, to see where we are not just with esports but just like all just the general EDI subjects that we're that we're talking about today so I mean I'm very very happy to be here <laughs> just happy to be here generally. Mm-hmm.